My first memories of fishing, I was around 10 years old, and I can remember my dad giving me a rod, my mum giving me some sweet corn and some luncheon meat, and they took me up to Keston. I can remember pulling up, getting out of my dad's van, and there was just bivvies everywhere. All the guys had free rods, all stainless steel bank sticks and buzzer bars. I just thought to myself, that's a bit of me, all the camping side of things as well, being out at night, you know, it sort of draws kids to, to it. Um, it wasn't too long before I caught my first one. There was a hole in the lilies, and I remember putting my rod in there. About half an hour later, it was away, and I caught a fish called Grandad. Then after that, I was hooked. I wanted to go out there as much as I could and spend as much time up there as I could. Turned up this morning at first light, had a good look around, didn't really see much to tell you the truth. So I've opted to fish a swim that I've fished before. Um, I actually fished this swim uh, the, the day after I got my ticket on the 1st of April. I was fishing a swim opposite and I see quite a few fish show in this area here. And having the van behind the swims is ideal, just a quick pack up. So I drove round, put a couple of singles out um, and yeah, they, they carried on showing. Um, come lunchtime, they sort of slowed down a little bit. So I got the leading rod out and had a good lead about and I found what they were showing on. And there's a bar that runs parallel with the bank about 15 wraps out, sort of breaks up a little bit and a few more patches are more gravel than, than others. Um, but yeah, so we, we keep our eyes peeled, see if we, if we see anything show we can move. Um, but I think it's going to be late afternoon and early mornings if they do show. With the waters being so cold, I decided to fish two rods on singles and the other one over a bit of bait. I'm a big believer of single hook baits this time of year. Even throughout the summer, I've caught some really good fish and big fish uh, on single hook bait approach. Where I do a lot of work nights and that, I don't think it's, it's good to be putting a lot of bait in. Um, you know, with the singles as well, your chance comes a lot quicker than them feeding, moving off the spot, then coming back when you're at work and, and, and eating the bait. So yeah, I think, you know, fishing single hook baits is, is a great approach and we haven't seen a lot today. So, I, I, you know, I chose not to put a lot of bait in, but you know, I'm a, you've got three rods. So if one starts to work, you can always change another one over. Um, you know, a lot of people these days fish all three the same, but I always try and fish them different, you know, different approach on, on each rod. I'm a ventilation engineer. Me and my father run the business. Um, I do three nights a week, a Tuesday, a Thursday and a Friday. Um, I leave here at six in the morning. I go home and then, and then get into London for eight o'clock. Um, it, it, it can be quite hard sometimes having to pack up at bite time, you know, you've got fish showing over your area, but you know, work comes first, I have to go. My fiance Laura is quite understanding about the fishing, it's nice to have that balance between work and fishing. Um, I've had a lot of relationships go wrong in the past due to fishing, um, but you know, at the end of the day I'm never going to change, I, I love the fishing, um, but you know, I try and sort of have a good balance keep the family happy and then sort of do my fishing as well. One guy that inspired me as a young age was a guy called Ronan O'Brien. When I first started fishing up Keston, Ro took me under his wing and showed me a load of tactics, rigs, watercraft, different presentations. 
Um, at the time, Roe was getting some, some bait off a guy called Chris Aswell. He had a bait company called Cart Buster Baits. Um, so I, I was getting the, the, the powder form, the base mix off of Roe and making my own bait. Um, Roe went on to catch some really good fish uh, from places like Halton, the Car Park Lake, Raysbury. You know, he's caught some amazing carp. I'm still really good friends with him now. This is a rig I've called a uh, Slip D lamp post rig. Um, it's a rig I've used a lot for single hook bait approach. Um, it's just a real nice tidy rig, uh, something that doesn't get used a lot. So first of all, I get the, the ultra stiff in 25 pounds and I peel off about 10 inches. Always give yourself enough to play with. You don't want to get caught short at the end. Um, then I peel back around three inches. like so and I form a loop and I get a hook swivel and put the hoop through the eye so it ends up like that then I get a size 6 mugger hook I tend to use the muggers more because it's curved I think it just sits better with a curved hook than it does with a wide gape. So you end up putting the eye of the hook through the hoop. Like so. And then the two tags, you go back through the eye of the hook. like so. I tend to put the swivel in line with the barb um, so you've got enough like loose like bit of play there. Then I just tie uh, a knotless knot. I, I tend to go about five turns over and then put that back through the eye of the hook like so. So you end up with something like that. You've got your tag ends there, and then your, your actual hook link there. And then I'll get myself some shrink tube. And it all depends how far you want the hook or the pop-up popped up off the, off, the, off the bed, late bed. So I tend to use probably, I don't know, just short of an inch. Thread that through. Put your tag end back through. You have to steam that. So I've, I've just steamed that and I've steamed it with a little bit of a kick so you can see like the hook slightly curved over and now I'm going to get a link sinker. These have got the high bore because of the hook link material is quite thick. Put one of them on. This helps if you position it in the middle of the hook length it help sink the hook link in the middle because sometimes it may sit off the deck off the bottom like that but with this it'll pin it down a bit more. Position that about halfway. And I use a hoop knot and I believe this is called an angler's hoop knot. So basically you, you form a loop but you go back on itself. Then you form another loop around it then you go between the two loops you can go on youtube and, and google it and it'll explain it a bit more you get a bait and needle and you go through the loop and you pull the other loop back through it's a little bit fiddly once you get the hang of it though and what happens here is it's a perfectly straight coming off the knot where if you do a figure of eight, sometimes the hook link kicks away from the actual hoop. But with this, as you can see, it's dead parallel coming down from the hoop. Cut 
the tag end off. And then basically I get an anti-tangle sleeve. These are a little bit longer, but I've cut them down so they're a bit shorter. That's how I just prefer to do it. Looks a bit neater than having like a longer one. With the aid of a baiting needle, thread it on. Like so. Obviously you have to steam this after. Pull it down a little bit. And then now, with the tag end here, I get a split shot on the end all depends what size bait you're using depends on what size split shot but here bb will weigh up way down a 16 mil pop-up little split shot and you put the split shot on the end of the little tail like so and what I tend to do is burn that little tail so it sits just underneath the split shot like so and there you go obviously once you've steamed it that'd be dead straight and that basically just sits off the floor as soon as the fish picks it up it just drops down into the bottom lip always it's a very, very good rig for fishing single hook baits. And I've used it for many years and caught some really good fish using it. There's two memorable captures that stand out to me. And one of them was catching single scale from Johnson's Railway. And the other one was catching the Medway Valley's first 50. The railway was always a lake I wanted to fish, you know, steeped in history. I think at the time it had around 35 carp in there, but for me it was always about catching single. Um, started fishing a swim called the Bridge, uh, baiting a little area, about 80 yards, a little hump. And I was catching quite a lot of fish from there, so I knew single wouldn't be too long. And then one morning off it went and single was mine. Um, it was 38 pounds at the time. Uh, absolute cracker. Uh, it's one that doesn't come out a lot so I was really chuffed to catch it because there's quite a few guys on there um, trying to catch it and they didn't and, and I did. Um, so yeah pleased with that one and the other one was the Medway Valley's first 50. Um, obviously I fished in the valley a long time. Um, to catch the first 50 was something really special. Um, so yes yeah, so I was fishing at the time, I was fishing Barden and I, my ticket come through for Brooklands um, so I waited till about September and I thought right it's time to go on there. So I went down and I, I, actually on my first day, uh, my first trip, I, I caught one, um, a nice 28 pounder. Um, but you know Brooklyn's is, is a water where you can drive round and you can park uh, next to your swims. It makes it very easy for, for the winter and that was when I was going to fish it in the winter time. Um, so yeah, so I carried on throughout, throughout the autumn time um, and then when the winter come, um, I sort of upped the game a little bit, started fishing a bit more, baiting up um, and it was one night my friend Paul was with me and he was next door. Um, I think I caught a fish about an hour before, um, I put the rod back out and the same rod went. Um, and I remember sort of playing it in, getting it in the net and I couldn't believe how like, long it was, it was a real long common. So I walked down to my friend Paul and he wandered back and, and he said to me, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the big common Wes, it looks massive. So I thought, right, let's weigh it now instead of like retaining it and it can lose a bit of weight. So I weighed it and it was 50 pound two ounces um, over the moon to catch like the first like Medway Valley 50, like the record. Um, so yeah, in, in, in morning time come, I've got a few of my friends down, we've got some real good pictures of it. So for me, that, that's, that's the two that stand out. My 24 hours with garden has come to an end. Unfortunately, I haven't caught one, um, but you can't catch them all the time. I think I'm gonna have a slow pack up. I'm gonna have a move, I think. Um, the wind's pushing nicely into the corner over there. And there's a swim there. It's the furthest away from the car park. Um, since uh, the trips I've been coming down, I haven't seen anyone in there. Um, so it could be a good little area to put some bait in and uh, keep an eye on it for the future. Uh, I'll take my rod around there, a leading rods, and have a little lead about see if I can find some areas and map it out, put them in my phone, so when I come back again, uh, I can just sort of wrap up and cast out and not have to use the float and disturb the water. <laughs>